based on three fundamental pillars. First, the satisfaction of fundamental human needs, <clears throat> the generation of growing levels of self-reliance at local and at national levels, and an organic articulation between people, nature and technology. By the way, this is nice beautiful symbol you have here is a very beautiful uh, design well it's 1000 years old and I discovered it about 25 years ago uh, when I was in exile from General Pinochet living in Sweden I discovered it in Viking runic stone and I was working these concepts and suddenly I said, my God, I mean, this is the perfect symbol for the harmony that should exist between human beings, nature and technology, so that none overwhelms the other and to generate a perfect harmony between an interdependence between the three. Well, and the basis is, of course, the protagonism <coughs> of people. That is, people as subjects and not as objects. And it is an internal state, so it cannot be an outside object. This object cannot be a need. And we propose to classify needs according to two criteria. First, an ontological or existential criteria, the needs of being, having, the needs of doing, and the needs of interacting. And, through an axiological or value, uh, vision, the nine, what we call the nine fundamental human needs. Protection, affection or love, understanding, participation, idleness, creation, identity, freedom, subsistence. If we have these two ways of classifying that, this gives origin to a very interesting matrix, which we call the needs matrix. Where this, what you have here, is invariant. What goes in here are the satisfactions what changes permanently. In this matrix there, is, there are no objects, there is nothing material in here. So when we speak about having, it's not having objects. It's having principles, values, laws, rules, traditions, whatever. The purpose of any economy, of any policy, the fundamental purpose is to generate conditions that allow access to these satisfiers in order that people can satisfy their fundamental human needs. And the economy has to do with everything. Although we are used to believe that economics has only to do with subsistence. No. Take for instance an economic policy that generates high unemployment. What happens in that, in that situation? You have been unemployed for a year, or a year and a half. Of course you have a problem of subsistence. You feel unprotected. You have problems of affection. Probably you start fighting with your wife. And you may have a marriage, marriage breakdown because of your financial problems. You don't understand what is happening. Why me? What did I do to be in this situation? It creates, of course, identity crisis that can lead you actually to self-destruction. So here you have an economic problem that affects the entire needs matrix. Through human scale, I mean, we see and perceive the way in a, in a different manner. If we ask the question, when is a development process better than an app? But if we say that development is about people and not about objects, in essence, the GDP, it's about objects, you know, what happens in the market, exchanges. In the market. So we say that that development process is best where the quality of life of the people improve the most. The obvious question is what determines people's quality of life. So we say that quality of life depends on the possibilities you have or have not to adequately satisfy your fundamental human needs. Let's go, let
Je suis un peu plus de temps. 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 Je suis un peu plus